Hey guys, what is up? Steven here, going to do uh, a fun video today. Uh, this is an idea that I saw from another YouTuber uh, re reacting to uh, a mock draft of Daniel Jeremiah without looking at it previously. So this is a blind reaction uh, for me. I'm going to be going over uh, our guy Brentley Weissman over at the Draft Network. Really excited about this one. Uh, he's obviously really plugged into the Chargers and knows the Chargers well, so I figured this was the uh, the right opportunity to do this. So um, let's dive into this one before I do. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my guy over at Quest Designs. Uh, he has been doing some great work for quite a while. He is a fellow Chargers fan, and he does have <clears throat> excuse me he does have some uh, stickers of our own that we collaborated with him. So. Uh, please go check him out at quest360.com. You can follow him on Twitter as well, quest360. And if you use the code guilty10, you get 10% off your first order. So uh, I want to give a shout out to Quest, doing some great work. And keep it up, man. And uh, like I said, if you go check him out, quest360.com, that link will be in the description. Uh, you can go there and use guilty10 for 10% off your order. All right, that being said, let's dive into this. Uh, Brentley Weissman, of course, friend of the show former Chargers scout, really plugged into the needs. So I think this is a great one. So again, I have not looked at this mock draft yet. This is going to be my first viewing. So really excited about that. Um, and yeah, let's dive in. And yeah, be sure to be sure to follow Brentley on Twitter, Brentley12. Uh, spoiler alert, he will be joining us uh, sometime this in the next couple of weeks uh, to talk about this and this and more. So uh, first pick in the draft, he has Evan Neal, tackle Alabama to the Jacksonville Jaguars. As he says, uh, you know, you can go with Aiden Hutchinson or Kayvon Thibodeau. He feels like uh, better players, maybe. But, you know, I, I think the priority for the Jacksonville Jaguars in Doug Peterson's first year should be to support Trevor Lawrence, much like uh, this past season was the priority to support Justin Herbert at the Chargers. So uh, I, I think Evan Neal is the right pick here. And I think in the second round, they should probably take a receiver or a tight end, uh, kind of keep that pattern going. All right, number two overall, he has Kayvon Thibodeau, edge rusher to the Lions. Uh, he's obviously very familiar with Kayvon Thibodeau as, as an Oregon Duck fan. And, you know, I, I personally have Aiden Hutchinson graded higher. Um, you know, I think Kayvon Thibodeau, uh, unfortunately, just did not match the kind of production that Aiden Hutchinson did this year. Um, much of that credit goes to my, my, my guys at the University of Utah. Um, but I think he still is a top three or four talent in this draft. I just think he was kind of outplayed by Hutchinson. And like I said, I think Evan Neal is a fantastic offensive tackle as well. So, uh, you know, there are rumors right now. He's getting the does he love football treatment this year, which I think is ridiculous every single year. Um, but he still should be a top three pick in my opinion. Um, all right. Texans, number three, Aiden Hutchinson, fantastic player. I, I think arguably the best player in this class. We'll see how that kind of finishes for me. But, uh, right now he does have the highest grade among any player that I have, uh, graded so far. And if you're Houston, I think you just draft, you know, whoever is there. Like, I, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, as he says, Houston just needs talented players. I think Kyle Hamilton, as he mentions, would be a good good pick as well. Can't go wrong between Hutchinson and Kyle Hamilton, even if you want to take Ikemi Kwanu, the tackle from North Carolina State. I think that would be a fine pick as well. Uh, Texans can really go in any direction. All right, so Jets get Ikemi Kwanu, the tackle from North Carolina State, uh, similar to the Chargers and the Jaguars before them. Uh, just got to support Zach Wilson at a higher level, and so – I'd be curious here in this situation if Ikemi Kwano plays right tackle, plays guard. I think in this situation with Ikwano's background, you could kind of mess around with that starting five. And, you know, Mikai Becton has been, kind of been a disappointment. So I think you can have insurance there. Um, but, you know, the, I'm not taking a receiver this early in this class. Both pass rushers are gone. So I think kind of by default, you got to go with the next best tackle. And they do that here. Oh, wow. Okay. So biggest surprise so far. Uh, Giants have David Ojabo in this scenario. I'm a big fan of Ojabo. From what I can hear, the uh, evaluations on Ojabo are kind of all over the map. I have Ojabo for what it's worth as edge three. And it sounds like uh, 
Brentley does as well, and I think he is a fantastic player, fantastic talent, very inexperienced, so the Giants will have to um, really do a lot of work on there. But, you know, having Wink Martindale, I think that's kind of a really good situation for him. So uh, this, to me, sounds like a bet on the ceiling kind of kind of pick for Brentley, uh, but I definitely don't hate it. And I should have brought some water to, up to here. I'm, <laughs> I'm dying right now. Um, all right, so Panthers at number six, Charles Cross, Mississippi State. I, I think this is the right pick. Personally, I know that they need a quarterback, but they also need a left tackle. They need a bunch of situations. And I don't think that this roster is good enough to support a franchise quarterback. I think you have so many needs really outside of receiver. The Panthers need everything. And so, um, you know, I don't love this quarterback class very much at all. I don't think any of these quarterbacks should be top 15 picks, um, you know, just based off the, of their talent and evaluations. Uh, of course, I assume that one will be a top 10 pick because that's just kind of the nature of the position. Uh, but in this scenario, I think the Panthers taking Charles Cross is the right pick. I think they desperately need a bona fide left tackle. Uh, and Charles Cross is, is certainly that kind of prospect, in my opinion. I know there's some concern about well, he played in the air raid. You know, he didn't play a ton of elite pass rushers, yada, yada, yada. But I think you look at the athleticism, uh, as Brentley cites here, the athletic tackle, smooth feet, long arms. Uh, dude is an athletic freak. Training with Duke Mannyweather, as Rashawn Slater did. Uh, last year, so I, I think this is the right pick. Okay, another surprise by Guy Brentley throwing the surprises all over tonight. So this is an interesting one. Giants taking Trevor Penning. He mentions that it could be a bit of a reach. Um, you know, Trevor Penning did have a, a good week at the Senior Bowl. I think, in my opinion, didn't really kind of cement himself as tackle four. Um, but Brentley seems to really think otherwise. So um, this is a surprise to me. I know that they need a tackle, but uh, in this scenario with Charles Cross off the board, I would take a Kyle Hamilton in this scenario or, you know, potentially trade down. But I, I personally, if I were a Giants fan and I saw Trevor Penning over Kyle Hamilton or one of the edge rushers, I would be, oh, wait, they just took Ojabo, excuse me. Um, but taking Penning over Kyle Hamilton to me is is a mistake. But I, you know, here's Kyle Hamilton. His his uh, false stops here for him goes to the Falcons. That's an interesting pick. Again, the Falcons kind of need everything. Unfortunately, they're in a situation with Matt Ryan's contract where they can't really do a whole lot of much. So, you know, take take the best player on the board. Don't hate that. Uh, all right, Broncos. Malik Willis take the first quarterback, please. Uh, <laughs> please go do this. I, I'm a fan of this pick. Um, you know, I don't love Malik Willis. I think his mechanics are, are a mess, man. And I think we saw that at the senior bowl. I think it was really erratic with his accuracy all week long, but man, he, he's got some pop. He's got some athletic and physical tools that are unmatched in my opinion, in this class, which again, we saw at the senior bowl. This is a tough landing spot for him in my opinion, because he would presumably be asked to start right away. I do think the system would fit him well with uh, Nathaniel Hackett, but man, I, I, if I were a Broncos fan, I'd be tr <laughs> I'd be kind of upset about this one myself. Um, personally, I don't think the Broncos will be picking in this slot. I think they try and use this number nine pick as a way to get a veteran quarterback, um, as he says here. But uh, yeah, Malik Willis at number nine. If the Broncos do that as a Chargers fan, I'd be pretty happy. All right, Jets again at 10. Uh, Derek Stingley, cornerback LSU, is really an interesting evaluation at this point. Um, you know, kind of an awkward fit, which he really, he mentions here. Robert Sala has kind of changed things up a little bit more than the Seattle uh, predecessors of his. But, um, you know, to me, I would prefer Sauce Gardner over Derek Stingley and I to be honest I would prefer Andrew Booth over Derek Stingley as well um that's kind of how I have those three stacked up right now um Derek Stingley's 2019 freshman tape was amazing top tier cornerback tape but uh he's really not played well over the last two years he's been injured so I, I think the first corner off the board should be Sauce Gardner. I know Alex is going to be really happy to hear that one. I know Alex loves Sauce. Uh, but this is definitely another surprise by uh, my guy, Brentley. 
All right, Kenny Pickett, Pittsburgh quarterback, goes to Washington. Uh, like him, I don't love these quarterbacks in this class. I think this is really like what's the difference between Kenny Pickett and Taylor Heineke, in my opinion. I think they're very similar stylistically. I think they're very similar in terms of the lack of a high ceiling. <clears throat> I think if the if Malik Willis is on the board, I can see Washington taking him. But I think Pickett is too similar to Taylor Heineke, to be honest with you. Um, I, I just I, I don't love that pick if uh, if I'm a Washington fan. Whew, man, uh, my guy Jermaine Johnson has had quite the, the rise from the Senior Bowl. Brentley has him going here to the Vikings 12th overall, as he says, stole a show down in Mobile. Um, really, I think Jermaine Johnson has a higher floor than David Ojabo and, you know, a lot of these other edge rushers. I, I think Ojabo probably has a higher ceiling, you know, just kind of comparing the two. But Johnson is a fantastic prospect in his own right. He's great against the run, really strong at the point of attack. And I think he really is a very versatile pass rusher. I went back and watched some of his Georgia tape. And, you know, he didn't play a ton. There was not a ton of production. But I, I think you see the flashes if you go back and watch that tape. And then he really turned that into a fantastic season last year at Florida State. And as Brentley says, best player in Mobile. So um, Vikings taking him. I think that's a great situation. Gets to play alongside Daniel Hunter, presumably. Um, curious to see what kind of scheme the Vikings are going to be running. But. Um, I think this is the start of where Jermaine Johnson can uh, start going. And I, I think this is a fine pick. <clears throat> All right, Browns, Traylon Burks. Um, Browns were one of the biggest disappointments in 2021. Absolutely agree there. I thought the Bengal, the Browns should have been who the Bengals were, really. I mean, I'm not saying the Browns should have been a, a Super Bowl team, but I thought that the Browns would win the division, uh, but they didn't. So, They've got some quarterback issues to figure out. Got to decide if Baker Mayfield is the guy. Um, I'm okay with this. I personally have Drake London as wide receiver one. I think Traylon Burks offers a lot of physical upside. Dude is a freak. I think he is a little stiff after the catch in terms of separation. I think he is not necessarily great at any one thing outside of his athletic ability. Um, but I, I think you take a bet on the tools. You can hopefully teach him uh, to kind of learn how to be a better route runner. I think he's kind of DK Metcalf-ish in that sense. Um, and the Browns do need a wide receiver one. So I don't hate this one. I, I have Drake London as wide receiver one. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Ravens taking Sauce Gardner. Uh, man, wouldn't that be the perfect situation for Sauce? That's... Oh, man, I, I think that's probably the, the best prospect landing spot possible. <laughs> um, this is uh, this is this is just too good, man. Um, as he points out, you know, he has Stingley ahead of Sauce. Sauce is long and lean with fluid hips. He really is, man. Sauce is just he is so much fun to watch and he just gets after it. He reminds me a lot of Pat Patrick Sertan. Um, the two kind of have similar physical profiles and just they're just really, really smooth. So, again, I, I have Sauce as CB1, and this would be perfect for him. All right, Eagles take it. George Karloftis peaked a little bit at pick 16 as well. Um, Karloftis, I think, definitely has become a forgotten name in this year's class, as, as Derek, as uh, Brentley points out. I just don't think he has that high of a ceiling. So, I think that's the difference for me. I think he's more of a safer kind of Sam Hubbard type of player. Um, and to be honest, I wouldn't hate it if the Chargers took him because I think they do need that kind of player. But I just think the other guys have higher ceilings. And yeah, you know, I think George Karloftis and his his energy, his motor, his physicality will lend themselves towards being an effective NFL player. So 16 Eagles take Andrew Booth. Again, somebody that I think is very, very high ceiling prospect as someone who's not um, played a ton. He, very similar kind of profile background that way to a David Ojabo. But I, I think you see 
a lot of great traits with Andrew Booth. I think he's incredibly athletic, really flips his hips at an incredibly high level. And to me, he's got the best ball skills of the class. I think he's got some ridiculous interceptions, does a great job getting his head around, great ball production when targeted. Um, the tackling, I know a lot of people are concerned about it. He leaves his feet a lot, so he is a little reckless. But I kind of look at that as him being fearless. I think he's a fantastic tackler uh, in a similar vein as J.C. Horn. So I'm really high on Andrew Booth. I have him ahead of Stingley, like I said. Um, you know, pairing him with Darius Slay would be a fantastic decision for uh, the Eagles, in my opinion. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Mouth's getting dry today. <laughs> All right. So uh, Chargers at 17, taking Trent McDuffie, one of uh, Brentley's favorite prospects in this class. I haven't exactly decided if I am going to have him or his teammate higher in terms of the priority in which I would want them to take the Chargers to take one of them. Um, but I think him and Asante Samuel Jr. would be a really fun pairing. You can really flip them, you know, back and forth between the slot and outside. I think, you know, McDuffie's tackling really stands out as he says. I'm a little worried about the deep speed. Brenton Lee seems to think otherwise, and I totally get that, but very similar profile to Asante Samuel Jr. And I think the two of them, Michael Davis, I think you remake that secondary. I'm in favor of taking a cornerback for sure. I'm not 100% sold on Trent McDuffie in particular. Uh, I would have loved to have Andrew Booth, like I said, in this scenario. This is an interesting debate because, you know, do you take the third, fourth corner on, off the board? Or in this scenario, do you take who went next? And in Jamison Williams, do you take what receiver to kind of prop up the Chargers offense and, and kind of keep working that way? So this to me is an interesting debate. I can definitely go either way with a Jamison Williams or a Garrett Wilson who we haven't seen come off the board yet. I'm just glad it wasn't Jordan Davis. I am not about that idea taking a defensive tackle, this uh, specifically a nose tackle this early. So if the board falls this way, right, you have the four tackles gone, you have the five edge rushers taken already. I think it comes down to cornerback and receiver if this is the case. And I can go either way. I really can. I'm generally not super into the idea of taking a receiver early. But, you know, if you're getting a second receiver as opposed to the fourth corner, you know, like I said, I feel like this could go either way. Shout out to uh, Brentley, though. I think, again, he knows the Chargers needs as well as anybody in the media on draft Twitter. And so him taking Trent McDuffie really kind of says a lot to me. All right. So Saints get Jamison Williams. They need a lot. <laughs> they need a quarterback. Uh, they need a lot of help on offense, I should say. I feel like their defense is kind of set. So, you know, there was a report that Michael Thomas is ready to be back on the team. Maybe he and Sean Payton just were not vibing. So, uh, Jameis William, Michael Thomas, that's a great pairing. If Jameis, if Jameis Winston is their quarterback, I think that's, that's better than what they had once he got injured. Um, but I, I think this is the right pick for the Saints. I can see them taking, you know, a Sam Howell in this instance, maybe. Or a Desmond Ritter. I haven't decided who I like after those two. I think Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett are definitely the top two quarterbacks um, in this class. I personally would take Willis. But I haven't decided about Rid Ritter versus Howell. So I'm um, curious to know if uh, Brentley had a quarterback here at all in his consideration or if he was always going to go receiver. So interesting there. All right, Eagles back on the board. Uh, taking Tyler Linderbaum, who is a fantastic center. Dude is just a wrecking ball at center. So I, I totally get this idea that, you know, they need to start preparing for life after Jason Kelsey. Kelsey is uh, reportedly coming back. And they also have Landon, Dick, Landon Dickerson, who played center at Alabama. So to me, this would be, if you're going to take an offensive lineman with this third pick, to me, this would be re about replacing brandon brooks and so to me uh in this situation i would take Kenyon green or zion johnson to play guard next to jason kelsey uh again if you take zion johnson he has that center flexibility too kind of gives them some options 
So I understand taking Linderbaum. This is the best player on the board. Uh, but to me, if I'm the Eagles picking for the Eagles, I would take Kenyon Green or Zion Johnson here. But just me. All right, so there's Kenyon Green to the Steelers. Fantastic pick. Kenyon Green is definitely what you picture in terms of a Steelers offensive lineman. You know, he, as Brentley points out, um, Matt Corral was, was tempting there. I could kind of see that. The Steelers reportedly have eyes from Malik Willis more than anybody else, any other quarterback. Um, but taking Kenyon Green is is a fantastic pick for them. Much needed. Uh, I don't know if they're bringing Trey Turner back or not, but they just need better offensive linemen. <clears throat> All right, this is another surprise by Brentley. This is a really interesting one. Chris Olave, receiver from the Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, he feels like he's kind of the forgotten man in the class. I think Olave is a deep threat. Similar vein of like Odell Beckham. Really fantastic route runner, deep. I'm a little worried about his play strength. I'm a little worried about him getting off of press. I'm a little worried about his frame holding up in the NFL, but he's fantastic. Uh, Speed, deep route runner. Um, Reportedly going to be running a 4-3 at the combine. So excited to see how that one pans out. And the, the Patriots do need deep speed. They do. They, they need more speed, really, in general. But um, in this instance, we haven't seen my guy Devin Lloyd come off the board yet, linebacker from Utah. We haven't seen Nicobe Dean either. I th- would not be surprised if the Patriots went defense if this is the board. Um, Jordan Davis as well, I feel like, could be a fit here. Um, selfishly, I would hope that they would take Devin Lloyd if he is on the board because that, to me, is like the perfect situation for Devin. Um, but to me, I feel like this is, I mean, it's hard to go wrong supporting your young quarterback. Right. But I just don't feel like Olave is the same kind of player as a Devin Lloyd or a Nicobe Dean, uh, in this instance, but, um, interesting pick for sure. All right. Jordan Davis goes to the Raiders. Um, I, I kind of disagree with the Raiders needing interior defensive line help, uh, you know, depending on what exactly they do. Uh, with some of their free agents, if they're kind of kind of revamp the whole unit again, uh, they are going to be running a three four. So Jordan Davis fits the scheme for sure. Um, <laughs> that would be so classic, man. All this shit I'm talking about not taking Jordan Davis goes to the Raiders and watch him become like their best player. That'd be so funny. Uh, not really, but you know what I'm saying. R- very ironic, at least. All right, Cardinals, Zion Johnson. Uh, very interesting dynamics going on with Kyler Murray today, uh, you know, according to Chris Mortensen. So I, I think they do need uh, some offensive line help. I think this board shakes out very poorly for them because they need secondary help in the worst way possible. Uh, you know, they <laughs> they did essentially the corner version of Eric Weddle with Bryce Alford, I think his name is bringing him out of retirement off the street and he ended up starting the whole season for them. So um, this is definitely an interesting pick, right? Like you protect Kyler Murray for sure. You get a run blocker. Um, You go pair him with Rodney Hudson. So I'm never going to be against taking an offensive lineman for your young quarterback. But to me, I think they need secondary help in the worst way possible. Cowboys, Trayvon Walker, edge rusher from Georgia. Another Georgia defensive lineman, which is kind of crazy. Um, I do agree with Brentley that Walker is a little bit of a tweener to me. Um, I feel like you're going to have to have a creative <clears throat> plan for him. The the Cowboys with Dan Quinn certainly have have been able to, to prove that they have done that. Reportedly moving on from Demarcus Lawrence, which is crazy to me. Randy Gregory, also a free agent. Um I don't feel like they need an interior defensive lineman, though. That's that's my thing with Trayvon Walker is he might be interior. He might be outside. I, th- I think they need a bona fide edge. And I just don't know if that's Walker. Uh, as he mentioned, the Kobe Dean, Devin Lloyd still on the board here. Interesting fits there. All right. Bills taking McDuffie's teammate, Kyler Gordon. Um, as he mentions, the loss of Trey Davis White. I think they really do need more speed in the secondary. I think that's some really solid players, but I mean, we all saw, I mean, Tyreek Hill does it to everybody, right? But 
we all saw what happened in that game. So uh, taking Kyler Gordon is, you know, makes sense in that regard. Uh, don't really know if he's a first round corner, but again, I have not firmly decided on the Washington corners yet. I'm only two games in there. So I like what I see, but uh, I definitely see that as a fit for the bills. All right. Titans go Jahan Dotson. Um, they definitely need some more playmakers alongside AJ Brown. Julio Jones experiment could not have gone worse last year. You know, who, who knows how that's going to go this year, but they absolutely need more playmaking ability on offense. Um, that was, you know, <laughs> that was front and center against the Bengals. Um, you know, as they're trying to throw clutch situation balls to uh, Westbrook Aquina and, you know, Des Fitzpatrick couldn't even make the team. So I like Jahan Dotson. Again, my opinions of this receiver class are very different than uh, Brentley's, but Dotson is a really good player. I think he probably ends up as wide receiver six or seven for me. Really solid all around prospect, as he points out, coming inside and outside, so gives them some flexibility. So I, I like this pick for the Titans, though I really do. Um, but you know, I would rather have Garrett Wilson in this situation. I would rather have Drake London in this situation. Uh, but that's just me. All right, Demarvin Leal for Tampa. Uh, this is a really interesting pick. I, you know, they do have Indomitian Sue. I think is a free agent, as is. William Golston. So this is a good fit for DeMarvin, you know, playing alongside Vita Vea and Jason and Shaq Barrett. And I think JPP is a free agent too, but I like DeMarvin Leal as kind of that four eye five technique hybrid defensive tackle edge rusher kind of player, uh, or like a big defensive end. I definitely do not want him playing like much three technique or one technique. So if he's replacing Sue, I think that's a really good fit. Um, Buccaneers potentially, as he says, you know, kind of revamping the offense. I could see this being a, a scenario for. Now, this is probably too early for Kenneth Walker. Um, you know, they have obviously Mike Evans. Maybe this is a Trey McBride landing spot as they kind of prepare for Gronk, life without Gronk as well. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Buccaneers are in such an interesting spot without Tom Brady, but um, I, I like Leal. His tape this year was definitely not as good as his tape last year. Um, so this is a good spot for him. I'm just not a fan of taking him this early. I would have Devontae Wyatt over him. Um, so that's, that, yeah, that's my thoughts on Leal. All right, Garris Wilson to the Packers. How funny would it be? Uh, <laughs> you know, the Packers, as he points out, never drafting first round receivers, potentially losing Devontae Adams. I mean, this would be a great spot for him if they have Aaron Rodgers for sure. But the Packers are going to be losing at least one of the Smith brothers, <laughs> not brothers, you know what I mean? Uh, potentially both. You know, the secondary I think is good in a good spot. To me, I, I would not be surprised if this is one of the other edge rushers. Um, curious to see if any of them come on, come off the board after this, you know, maybe this is a situation where the Packers try and trade down with a quarterback with all the quarterbacks still on the board, but I, I don't hate this. I like Garrett Wilson a lot, man. He's fantastic. I think he offers them things that they don't really have of anyone outside of Devontae Adams right now. So, um, like I said, I would be okay with the chargers taking Garrett Wilson at 17, so the Packers getting him at 28 is fantastic value. Great pick for them. Oh. <laughs> Brentley just had to throw me the Brentley doing me dirty with this one. Uh Devin Lloyd to the Dolphins. Oh man. Whew. I think like this is a good schematic situation for Devin. But uh man, the Dolphins taking Devin Lloyd would not be fun for me. Uh I, I obviously love the guy. I, I think Devin Lloyd. Probably goes higher than this. Yeah, I think he is a top 15 player in the class. Again, I'm very biased, but I, I think with you know kind of the lack of clarity at receiver, corner, um, even edge after the top two, I think we see Devin Lloyd ultimately end up in the top 20. Uh, this would be this would be this would be awful, man. <laughs> this is outside of the Raiders, I think this would be no. This isn't that that worse of a situation. 
I definitely don't want him on the Eagles. I definitely don't want him in any sort of Seattle cover three scheme. And I don't want him on the Raiders. Like that's, that's my thing with Devin Lloyd. Stay away from the Seattle scheme, stay away from Las Vegas. And I'm probably okay, but I just don't, I, I don't want him in this situation. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, frankly, I think the Dolphins probably have to go receiver in this situation. I think they need help for Jalen Waddle and Tua. I think they need offensive line. Uh, Bernard Raymond maybe makes sense in this situation, but uh, Lloyd is a very talented player. So best player on the board, I guess. Um, Daxon Hill, safety from Michigan to the Chiefs. As he says, Tyron Matthews set to hit free agency. Um, and he does share a lot of similarities with Matthew. Again, Daxon Hill barely started his evaluation myself, but he moves around a lot. Him and Jalen Petrie are very similar players in this class. Um, ultimately, one of them probably ends up being safety two, safety three. I, you could probably interchange them at this point. Um, but Hill's, Hill would be a really good pick for the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are in a situation where you just take best secondary player on the board. And if that's Hill, then fine. All right, Darren Kennard. Guard tackle, who cares, he says. Uh, Darren Kennard, uh, to me, is, is a tackle. I think that we saw him play tackle the first day of practice of the Senior Bowl and in the game. And he, he just looked much more comfortable in his own skin at tackle than at guard. So to me, I would play him at right tackle. Uh, you know, maybe they bring back Riley Reef, Maybe they don't. But to me, Darian Carnard is a fantastic pick here for the Bengals, who we just saw lose the Super Bowl uh, because of offensive line play. So very ironic that uh, the day after I admit that Chase was the right pick over Panay Sewell, they get destroyed because their offensive line sucks. So very ironic there. All right, last pick, the Detroit Lions. All right, Drake London finally comes off the board. This is a fantastic pick for the Detroit Lions. They need a true number one. Um, I know that Amon Ross St. Brown was fantastic for them. Also, side note, can we can we stop asking if Josh Palmer was the right pick over Amon Ross St. Brown? Like, St. Brown's not getting 130 targets in, in Los Angeles. Like, what is, what is this debate about? I don't get it. Um, anyways, fantastic pick here for the Lions. I think they could go with London. I think they could go with George Pickens. Um, either one, I feel like, even Christian Watson at this point, I think this board f falls very nicely for the Detroit Lions, being able to get a true number one receiver to give Jared Goff slash quarterback of the future. Um, but suddenly now you have London, Amon Ross St. Brown, TJ Hawkinson. Now you got something cooking in Detroit in terms of the skill position where you really kind of remake that unit. Maybe you add another one in free agency. So I, I really like what, uh, what Brentley did with the Detroit lions here. So, uh, there we go. That's, uh, <laughs> That's all 32 picks. This was a little bit longer than I uh, anticipated, but I had a really fun time doing this. This was a good exercise. Um, you know, I, I think that this is a situation that I can see myself doing this kind of thing again. I really enjoyed reacting to this blind mock draft. We'll kind of have to see uh, kind of what other mock drafts are able to do. But I had some time tonight after the Super Bowl. Chargers got next, by the way truly believe that so um players left off this list that i think are interesting let's see not necessarily surprised at any of the snubs kair elam to me is kind of like that next cornerback after andrew booth and mcduffie that I like a lot more than other people do because of his ability as a cover man. I think his tackling leaves a lot uh, to the lot left to desire. Um, but I could see him going into the first round. I mentioned Trey McBride, the tight end from Colorado State. He's kind of presumably the number one tight end. Haven't watched or graded him yet, but uh, I could see him sneaking into the first round. Uh, Nicobe Dean didn't go in the first round here. That's somebody that I think could make a lot of sense for somebody. 
man, the draft network has Malik Willis at 49 on their board. That's crazy. All right. Well, uh, that's that, you guys. That's going to do it for me tonight. So let me know uh, what you think of this video. If you want to see this series continue, I'm happy to continue to do this. This is this was a lot of fun. So as always, please uh, like the video, comment, hit the subscribe button. We do really appreciate all that support. And uh, yeah, we got some fun things planned for you guys over the next couple of weeks. We'll see you then. Bolt up.